Ferdinand Keat and his former protector turned employer Ranger Thawkins met near the gates early the next morning. Ferdinand was quite early, but still Thawkins was standing at the gate waiting impatiently, tapping his foot on the sandstone wall. He was chewing hard on a wooden toothpick and the young man wasn't sure he had slept at all or more likely just walked down the hill from the tavern. I wasn't sure what to wear. Will we be riding or walking? Dawkins responded with a grunt and a small head nod down the road out of town. He pushed off the wall and started walking. All right, walking it is, said Ferdinand, chasing after the ranger. Kid, the road west is a different animal after we pass the Monument to the Fallen. Get all your chatter out now because in a few days I'm going to need your ears and your full attention. Let me see your sword. Ferdinand passed it along. It was his father's sword, and outside his training in Port Bray, the first convoy he'd ever seen was when he and Thawkins were ambushed by skeletons on the way to White Sands. How much money do you have left? Thawkins grumbled, shaking his head and handing the sword back to Ferdinand. Two ingots and a nugget. It wasn't much, but enough to eat and hopefully say it's a few inns they find along the road for a few days. He was counting on the ranger to pay him before his money ran out. It's enough then. We'll need to get you something better for this journey. I know a smithy at the Monument to the Fallen who owes me a favor. Seems it's time to collect. How far is it? I've heard it's quite the sight to see. Two weeks out from here. Thawkins pulled out his bow. Let's find something for breakfast. So, where are we going? Ferdinand Keat asked for at least the 20th time since leaving White Sands. You'll know when we get there, kid. Now keep your eyes open and mouth shut. The sun was close to setting and the shadows were beginning to win their day-long battle with the land. They had been on the road for six days, killing their food when they saw it. Ferdinand had never seen such a shot as Ranger Thawkins. The slightest move in the bush and he would send an arrow through a rabbit's neck before Ferdinand even saw it was there. True, on the way to White Sands, they had been ambushed by a small group of skeletons, and in that battle, the boy had been able to take out one while the ranger had dealt with the other three. Thawkins hadn't seen how Ferdinand had won this particular duel with the undead, but it wasn't quite as graceful as he later led on. In fact, the skeleton had actually fallen while pursuing the boy. Ferdinand wasn't exactly running for his life, but maybe backpedaled for it might be more accurate. The creature had fallen, and Ferdinand luckily had not lost his wits entirely, and struck true with his old hand-me-down sword, removing the skeleton's head from its shoulders. By the time he climbed back up the hill, Thawkins had made quick work of the other three. Presently, Thawkins and Ferdinand were rounding a large bend in the path. Thawkins slowed to a stop, crouching behind a rock formation. Smell that? No, what? Sulfur. Dawkins pulled off his bow and notched an arrow, looking back at his young apprentice. There's a nether portal open nearby. Ferdinand unsheathed the sword, and the two men started to move. Ranger Thawkins had smelled a nether portal open. Thawkins and his new apprentice? Ferdinand Keat moved quietly through the bush near the road. Crouching behind a large tree, Thawkins whispered to the boy, There are three big men. Keep your head down, and if they come after you, run. You aren't trained for this. Ferdinand nodded. The thought of turning and running didn't sit well with him, but he had to admit the older man had a point. Although Ferdinand had managed to take out a skeleton a few weeks ago, it was more beast than a well-trained soldier of the nether, and, in fact, the skeleton had almost taken himself out of the fight. Thawkins re-notched an arrow, making sure everything was ready for the attack. Spinning around the side of a tree in a fluid motion, he unleashed an arrow that sailed true, striking the nearest of the pigmen in the chest. Moving at near lightning speed, the other two drew their golden swords and rushed at them, clearing the gap faster than Ferdinand ever could have expected. The ranger dropped his bow and pulled his broadsword just in time to deflect the opening blow by the first of the two pigmen. The other headed for the boy. Ferdinand did as instructed, he turned and ran. Time seemed to slow to a stop as his legs felt like they were planted firmly in mud. The pigman was moving like the wind. He would overtake him soon. Ferdinand knew he had to take action. Turning and swinging his sword with all his might, the zombie pigman deflected it with such ease 
He almost seemed to smile as he lowered his sword. Ferdinand struck again, and again it was deflected with almost no effort at all. He struck again and again. The pigman was savoring this. It was obvious he was just toying with the young, helpless, untrained opponent. Ferdinand attacked again. This time, the pigman must have had enough. He decided it was time to end it. With ease, he knocked the sword from the youngster's hand. Grinning, the monster lifted his sword to end it. Just a moment before his sword fell, the grin on his face froze. The head of an arrow exploded through his chest. He slumped to the ground, exposing a bloody but very alive Thawkins, still holding his bow, leaning against a tree. Someday, grimaced the older man, you're going to have to tell me how you managed to defeat a skeleton with moves like that. The short skirmish had ended. Ferdinand and Ranger Thawkins managed to take out three zombie pigmen without taking any blows themselves, although it was close. Had Thawkins taken any longer to come to the boy's aid, there would have been a golden sword running through his chest. Both men picked themselves up off the blood-soaked ground and looked around. Thawkins had mentioned he smelled another portal, which was the only thing that gave the two men a chance to surprise attack the pigmen. First thing about portals is, you can smell them. If that doesn't work, you can usually hear them. There's a low hum that works its way right through the ground or walls, grumbled the older man. Second thing is, until you learn how to fight, if you smell one or hear it, you go the other way, fast. I took basic lessons in Port Bray, but no one in my class moved as fast as these monsters. Not many men do. Thawkins looked up and down the boy, maybe appraising him for the first time. We'll start tomorrow, first break of light. Start what? teaching you how to fight. Where we're headed, you'll need it. Now, how in blazes did you manage to kill a skeleton on the way to White Sands? The boy looked down. He was embarrassed to admit it now. His omission of certain details had led the ranger to think he could fight. And the truth is, he barely even knew how to hold his father's sword. He fell. He was chasing me and he fell. I took off his head after he hit the ground. <laughs> The gruff old man chuckled. He didn't seem to be as angry as Ferdinand had expected. In fact, he didn't seem angry at all. Life has a funny way of sorting people out. You took out an undead and fended off a very trained scout from the nether long enough for me to put an arrow through him. It was clumsy and looked ugly as sin, but still, you live. Maybe you have more to you than you think. Come on, kid. Monument to the Fallen is still days away, and we have a man we need to see. The road to Monument of the Fallen was noticeably less developed and less traveled than was the west road between Port Bray and White Sands. While on the first leg of their journey, they would pass other travelers headed this way or that, sometimes a few an hour. This last few days, they had scarcely seen one a day. Even then, it was different. These travelers would keep their eyes down, staring at the road. The only acknowledgement that they weren't alone came when they slid to one side, allowing for room to pass. Why is everyone so different here? Ferdinand Keat asked his traveling companion. It's night and day, isn't it, kid? These are hard people. The older man was unusually chatty this morning. Remember, White Sands isn't the frontier. The degenerates who live there generally weren't born in White Sands. It's more of a collection trough for those who have nowhere else to go. Yeah, but still. Ferdinand supposed there wasn't much else to say. Ranger Thawkins was right. There were likely as many bandits out this far from Houston now as anything else, and it was a long way between Treville and Monument of the Fallen. Who lives here? Thawkins had mentioned there was a man he needed to see, but never more than that. A sage. Ferdinand audibly gasped in disbelief. A sage? From the Order of Man? Although growing up in Port Bray, near the actual birthplace of the Order, it was forbidden to visit, and no one, no one would break that particular order. The stories of Rubetto and the High Humans were centuries old, but still told with awe and fright. Rubetto, one of the first High Humans, had single-handedly slain hundreds of Donau soldiers in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Order of Man was essentially formed that day. People wanted, no, needed to know how one man could do that, and the Order set out in its quest to understand the High Humans. What could a sage need with a ranger and his student? Ferdinand thought for a second. Are we going to find the High Humans? 
Even after these weeks of traveling with the ranger, walking during the day, training mornings and evenings, Thawken still wouldn't talk of his quest. <laughs> no, kid. But sages collect information, and I'm hoping that this one knows the location of Salea. 